welcome to the channel and you've caught me in the middle of looking awkward really you've probably noticed there's a camera over my left shoulder which is to your right which is why i'm sitting at this strange awkward angle what i'm in the middle of doing is a swept alignment on an rp38 hacker hunter and i thought i'd just go through the simple procedure of doing a swept alignment uh, on the camera that I'm going to switch to now, you will see that we have, and I'm going to use my pencil as a pointer, you'll see that we have the sweep generator here. And this is set to a center frequency of 10.7 megahertz with a 700 kilohertz sweep, because that's the lowest it will actually go to. It'll only do 10 megahertz to 18 gigs, but obviously we don't want to sweep all the way into infinity. Uh, we've got a very low signal level at the moment, minus 70.9. And the reason for that is we don't want to activate the AGC on the radio. Now, the AGC on the radio is purely there to even out the reception volume. So if your signal is fading up and down, it evens out the volume. I could go into far more technical detail, but who needs it? Let's just say... It evens up the signal. We've got the sweep set to 10 milliseconds from 10.0 to 11.4, which is the 700 kilohertz wide. What we've got on the oscilloscope over that side is what should be a lovely S curve, but we haven't. We've got a very strange looking piece of kit doing strange things. Now we are in XY mode. We're feeding the X axis from the sweep generator. The Y axis we're taking from the volume control on the radio. And we are putting an input into the radio. Now I will show you that and then explain what I'm doing as we're going through. So let me get everything organized so that you can see the scope. I'm not going to be changing anything on the sweep generator at all. So we don't need to worry about that. All I'm going to do is change the view for that camera so that you can see the oscilloscope. And I'm going to use the overhead camera to show you exactly what I'm doing on the bench. Back in a moment. Let's get it all set up for you. OK, so now I'm sitting at much better angle, almost in the centre of this camera screen. And you should be looking at the downward view of the radio. Now, it's out of the case. The amplifier is just off camera that way. And that is connected to my bench speaker. And if I make sure it's on FM and we'll turn the volume up. And that buzzing noise is the frequency sweeping very quickly. As I say, we've got it set to 10 milliseconds from end to end. So it starts at 10 megahertz, finishes at 11.4 uh, megahertz in 10 milliseconds. That's how fast it's sweeping. We have, here's the output from the volume control. And I've just used this capacitor as the takeoff point I could have just as easily taken that from there and we'd get the same result as you see it doesn't matter which of those points I use now on this end here let me just undo that you'll see that I've disconnected this wire here from this board here now this is the initial FM tuner section and this is where it first turns into an IF frequency. Well, it actually doesn't, it turns here, but this is the IF out of here that goes into these three sets of cans. This point here is the easiest route to get into here. You also have to lift this capacitor to take voltage away from the back end of the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I will connect the earth wire back up and I can either use the earth wire of the coax from the IF 
or this earth point here. I'm going to use the cable because it's just there. I'm also going to use the blue wire. And this is the centre of my signal generator's RF output. And I know it's a very rusty clip, but hey-ho, I can't be bothered to change it. And there we are, we have it. Let's just make sure that I've got my noise again. Right, so you can hear that uh, Chinook helicopter coming into land. Not that the volume makes any difference at all, as you saw from the oscilloscope. I turn it up and it's not making any difference. So what do I need to do? Well, what we're trying to do is make sure that this section here is set to dead on 10.7. But not only is it set to 10.7, it is using both halves to work correctly and again you know the discriminator here is these two diodes and the discriminator is what turns your radio signal into sound again what we've got to do then is we've got to tune this section here to let 10.7 megs through and we're not meant to get on the screen of the oscilloscope up here we're meant to get a nice S curve so it goes down then up and then down again and that has to be as symmetrical as possible to get the highest fidelity possible out of the unit. So let's start by seeing what we can twiddle. Now the instruction manual which I do have a copy here actually tells you to adjust IFTs 2, 4 and 6 because these are the FM ones this is AM here, and we're not going to touch that in this video. So let's do this, and let's first of all see what we can get on the oscilloscope screen. Now, I'll probably do some picture-in-picture picture here. As you see, we're getting a little bit of a curve there. So I'm going to move on to the next one to see if I can improve that at all. And we're getting the dip, but we're not getting the peak. So let's see if we can get a peak. And this can take quite a while because every adjustment you make will affect something else. Uh, oh, and here we go starting to come in now now as you see we're getting fairly symmetrical here now and I can change the volts per division to give you a better screen now the problem I've got here is I'm using a digital scope it's not the best thing for analog measurements like this you don't get a nice clear line. You get lots of little dots. And as you can see, it's, it's not as clear as, as an analog scope would be. But we can try and do what we can. Now, what we're looking for is to get this amplitude as high as possible while maintaining this curve. So when we adjust one half of the coils, it goes up and when it adjusts the other half it will bring the other half in you are trying to get them as close together as possible size wise so for example you know there's no point in having it where one is much taller than the other because it means it will sound a bit mushy and distorted but we want as much gain as possible on that curve because we'd like to get as many signals in as we can. Now we can go too far, say so gain is not the whole thing because we could end up with a case like we have here where we've got more than one division on one side and only one division on the other. We're looking for symmetry as well. So if we can bring that up, now as you see the bottom is just touching that division, the top is just touching there, this is 
the zero volt line. So we're just going to see if we can get any more out of it by peaking the next set. See that one takes it right out, meaning one half is going to be stronger than the other. So we need to make sure that we bring the discriminator set of coils right back into alignment there. And I think let's just have another quick go through. Are we going to get any improvements? That's symmetrical. That's symmetrical. That's about the same each. And we'll just get that in there. That's about as symmetrical as it's going to get. So what do we do from here now? Well, we can, first of all, connect the IF section back to this first bit, and we can then check the signal coming through here. So if I just do that, and because I'm reckless and feckless, you will notice that I'm not even turning the radio off. The oscilloscope, as you can see, has uh, reverted to the zero line because the sweep's not there. And then we're going to connect the earth to here. And this here is the point at which the RF goes through on this capacitor here. Now, I'm going to have to increase the level on the signal generator because we're now going through an extra set of coils. And as you see, while I increase that, we are getting a little bit more of a signal. But unfortunately, it's slightly out of symmetry at that point. So let's just try gently bringing that back in. We've got three divisions on the bottom, two and a bit on the top. So we're going to try and get that to be as symmetrical as possible. And there we go. We have two and a half and one, two and a half. So now that is the FM section fully aligned. Let's test it out. And the easy way to do that is disconnect all our gubbins, like so. Just unplug all of that. Turn the radio on its end. Pull the aerial up a little bit. And... Can't have too much of that, obviously, because uh, copyright. Now, in here, this is a Faraday cage, so I have real difficulty. Picking up anything else. So there we are. Put the aerial down so you don't see it across my face. That is FM swept alignment on a Hacker Hunter RP38A. With that, I'm going to say thank you, and hopefully, you've enjoyed this little video to just show how straightforward this is. It's not a hard format to follow. Um, what else can I say? But if you like the video, you know what to do. The like, subscribe, bell, ding dong, wang dang dang dang, wing dee dang dong ding. And yes, my hair went pink. It was a result of that Russian capacitor in the previous video, which you can watch up there or there, depending where I put it. Thanks very much. Take care, guys. Bye for now.